Good day everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this lesson, I will discuss to you about illustrating and symbolizing propositions. First, let us define what proposition is. A proposition is a declarative sentence that is either true or false, but not both. Take note. A proposition is a declarative sentence. That means to say that if a given sentence is in imperative form, exclamatory form, or in interrogative form, it is not a proposition. If a proposition is true, then its truth value is true, which is denoted by letter T. Otherwise, its truth value is false and is denoted by F. To avoid writing long propositions, we use propositional variables. A propositional variable is typically a single letter, such as letters P, Q, R, and so on. It can also denote arbitrary propositions. For example, the proposition P, it is raining. P here represents the proposition, it is raining. And then we have the proposition Q, the streets are wet. Q here represents the proposition, the streets are wet. If a sequence of propositions is considered, we denote the propositions by P sub 1, P sub 2, P sub 3, and so on. So for our first activity, you only have to identify whether the given statement is a proposition or not. And if it's a proposition, identify its truth value, whether it is true or false. Are you ready? Good, let's have the first question or the first statement. Mindanao is an island in the Philippines. Is this a proposition or not? Answer, it is a proposition. And since Mindanao is indeed an island in the Philippines, its truth value is true. Let's have our second given. There are 15 months in a year. Is this a proposition or not? Of course, it is a proposition. And its truth value is false why it's because there are only 12 months in a year our third given 3x minus 4 equals 2 when x is equal to 2 the given is still a proposition and the truth value is true it's because when we try to substitute 2 to the variable x 3 times 2 is 6, and minus 4, that is equivalent to 2. That is why it is true. What about this? Will you be my Valentine date? Answer, it is not a proposition. Why? It's because this is an interrogative sentence. An interrogative sentence is a sentence that asks a question. So, in this statement, it is asking if you can be my Valentine date. That is why this is not a proposition. What about this? Go to the store and buy some candies. The answer, it is not a proposition. Why? It's because this is an imperative sentence. It is giving you command to go to the store and buy some candies. Got it? That's good. Now what about this? 3x minus 4 equals 2. This is not a proposition. Why? It's because... A statement involving variable is not a proposition since it is neither true nor false until a value is assigned to the variable. If you remembered in the first few examples, I've presented 3x minus 4 equals 2, but there is a specific value of the variable which is equivalent to 
x equals 2. The indication of the value of the variable x makes the statement a proposition. But in this case, this is not a proposition since there is no assigned value to the variable. In identifying a given statement, whether it's a proposition or not, you just have to remember that a proposition is a declarative sentence and its truth value is either true or false but cannot be both. If the given statement is in interrogative, imperative, or an exclamatory sentence, it is not a proposition. Got it? Very good. At this time, consider relating proposition P to another proposition Q to form a new proposition. So to connect P to Q, we use the following connective symbols. We have our first symbol, and this is read as not. The resulting proposition is called negation, and in symbols, it is written this way, and it's read as not P. Then we also have this connective symbol. This is read as and. The resulting proposition is called conjunction. In symbols, it is written as P and Q. Then we have here another connective symbol. It is read as or. The resulting proposition is called disjunction. And in symbols, it is written this way. It's read as P or Q. Do not be confused with the connective symbols for conjunction and disjunction. For AND, it's pointed upward, but for OR, it's pointed downward. Then we have this arrow. This is read as implies or if then. The resulting proposition is called conditional or implication. And in symbols, it is written as P implies Q. And as for this connective symbol, this is read as is equivalent to or if and only if. The resulting proposition is called biconditional or equivalence. And in symbols, it is written this way. It's read as P is equivalent to Q. Basically, we have learned five connective symbols. And let's try to apply those symbols in our next activity. So for activity number two, write each symbolism in ordinary English sentence. Let the proposition P be it is raining and the proposition Q be the road is slippery. Are you ready? Okay, let's have the first given. So for the solution, remember this symbol is conjunction and it's read as and. And we have here the proposition P, it is raining. The proposition Q, the road is slippery, therefore, it is raining and the road is slippery. For our next example, so this symbol means if then. This is an implication, therefore, it is if it is raining, then the road is slippery. Did you got it? I hope so. Now what about this third example? So we have here negation of Q and the biconditional symbol. Then the negation of P. In ordinary English sentence, it is The road is not slippery. This is for the negation of the proposition Q. If and only if. This is for the symbol by conditional. And it is not raining. The negation of proposition P. So again, the road is not slippery. If and only if. It is not raining. It's just easy, right? What about this? For question number four, it is not the case that it is raining or the road is slippery. This symbol is disjunction, that's why we use OR. And since 
the disjunction of the proposition P and Q is being negated, we use here it is not. So again, in ordinary English sentence, this symbolism is translated as it is not the case that it is raining or the road is slippery. It's just easy, right? I understand that at first it may be confusing, but I know you will be able to get it. Let's proceed to activity number three. Write each statement in symbolic form using the proposition P and Q. Let the proposition P be, he is tall, and the proposition Q be, he has brown eyes. So for our first given, he is not tall. In symbols, this is not P. The negation of the proposition P is written this way, not P. What about number two? He has brown eyes and he is tall. In our second example, it is using the connective word and. Therefore, it is conjunction and it is written this way. Q and P. So we write the proposition Q first because in the given statement, he has brown eyes is written first as well and then the word and we have the symbol and then he stole the proposition P for our third example if he is tall then it is not true that he has brown eyes take note of the words if then and then we also have not Therefore, expect that there is an implication or a conditional statement and also a negation of a certain proposition. So, he is tall is the proposition P. It is not true that he has brown eyes. This is the proposition Q. But since it has the word not, we negate the proposition Q. And then, if then... There's a symbol for the if-then statement. So we have here, P implies not Q. And that is how to illustrate and symbolize propositions. I hope that you got something out from this lesson. And if you are still confused, then you can watch it again. You just have to replay until you'll be able to grasp the discussion. Have a great day, everyone.